Hello, today I'll be walking through my tutorial about exploring Notre Dame of Paris in the virtual world. So we'll be showing you how to create a computer model of this cathedral, or of any cathedral for that matter, any building. So I'm Miles Zhang, and I'm an art and architectural historian. The kind of building we'll create together, and the template that I'm working from, will be this model. And this is the kind of model that you'll be able to create at the end of this little tutorial. So this is a model that loads in your web browser. It loads as an interactive model and you can fly around and move in. So this is the entire Cathedral of Notre Dame of Paris and it loads on your web browser without you needing to download any software. And it gets quite detailed down to the level of individual faces and people and details. So the challenge of this tutorial and this project will be to show you how to create a model like this. So not just to create a model and to upload screenshots online, but to post that model online in a format that is entirely interactive. Our work as architects requires us to create architectural plans and models. These files are usually shared with clients and the public in the form of traditional floral plans, sections, elevations, still images populated with stock people in cars, or video fly-throughs. But none of these formats are 100% interactive. You could, for instance, give your client or the public a virtual reality headset to navigate around the space. Or you could send them the 3D file to download and view from their own computer. Now, both of these methods require special equipment and tech know-how. Most of the world has no clue what computer-aided design is. So the challenge, therefore, is how can you communicate architecture with the public? One way is to do that with a 3D model. Another way that I'll be showing you today is to create a models in SketchUp or any other CAD software and to share those online for people to explore. And creating models and optimizing models for online display of architecture is a different set of challenges than just creating any other computer model that will only be viewed from your computer or, or from a downloaded file. And with models online, the challenge I've found is that balance of size versus accessibility. That is, on the one end of the red line being wherever your model sits on that scale, you can have a really, really detailed model, giant file size, but that'll have low accessibility because that will never load in someone's web browser. Or you can, on the other end, you can have a really low, low detail model, which will have high accessibility, but might not have enough detail to be convincing like the actual structure you're proposing to build or that you're representing. So I'll just walk you through a few examples. Here's one example. I didn't create this model, but it's an example. This is a photogrammetry model of Notre Dame of Paris with millions of polygons and billions of points of data, and it's a giant file size. So it's really high detail, but it's low accessibility because something like this would have a real difficulty loading in your web browser. This kind of model would also be difficult to interpret. So for instance, if you wanted to edit it or if you wanted to turn this into a construction sequence of the cathedral in history, that might be difficult with the amount of data required and with the software specialty skills required. On this scale, that model of Notre Dame would fall up here. So really high detail but low accessibility. Another example would be a more conventional model, which is this one right here. I didn't create this one either, but it's an example. So this is much, much smaller file size. It's easier to interpret. And in this one, there are really two ways to represent details on a model. You can represent details through physical polygons. That is, if you're representing a brick wall, you physically sketch out every single brick and the increases and decreases in the depth of the brick and the 3D details on those bricks. Another way to represent detail in the model is with photo textures. So if you have a really accurate image of brick, you can mount that or paste that on top of the textures. In this case, with this model, all of these details are represented as polygons. I'll get to that in a moment. And on this scale right here, the model would fall somewhere down on the other end. So a lot less detail, and somewhat better accessibility. 
Another alternative is to get really, really low detail. So this is a low detail model, which has almost no polygons. So 2,500 polygons, almost nothing. And it'll load really fast in the web browser. The problem with this is that the model is so low detail that it almost doesn't look like the cathedral representing. All of those details on the roof, on the cornice, on the towers, they're all gone. And this would fall probably on the very, very bottom. But the model I'll be talking about today is one that I created, which I feel is somewhere in between. It's the kind of model that's optimized to be viewed online, so it has just enough detail that it looks convincing, but not so much detail that it won't load in the web browser. So you want to keep the file size down. And on this scale, we have here high detail, low accessibility, less detail, but high accessibility, and we're aiming for somewhere in between to get the model just enough that it'll load in within a minute or 30 seconds when someone opens it on their web browser. And that's really difficult if you're representing something as big as a cathedral. So you can get a lot of detail on a small part of the cathedral or a little detail on a lot of the cathedral. So to review, you have these three models that fall somewhere along that spectrum. And we're trying to get somewhere in the middle. So we're here going to compare the conventional ways of building a model on the right-hand side with the way that I built the model on the left-hand side. So both of these models look pretty similar in the amount of detail. In, the, in my case, the model here, all of the detail, these are all image textures. And on the right-hand side, all of these detail, these are all polygons. So for instance, if you turned off all of the image textures in both of these models, the models would actually look quite different. So on the right hand side you can see that all of the 3D elements, these are actually 3D polygons in the model, so 3D geometry. On my side, on the other side, you can see that all of this detail is actually just an image. It's a flat surface, very very low polygon count with an image mounted on it. And the method that I've used produces a much smaller file size. So it's about a third the file size and many fewer polygons. So on the right hand side, there's about 3 million polygons. That kind of file probably wouldn't load in the web browser. And on the left hand side, it's my model with only 500,000 polygons. So it's a large file, but it still loads. And so for comparison, here we see this reference model, which is online, but it loads as a series of images. So again, it's a great model, but all the effort invested in creating those details can't really be viewed online. And this is a view of my model from beneath. And this little tutorial, I'll be breaking it down into three parts in a series of videos. So I'll have a few tips to create low poly, that is low polygon, 3D models in SketchUp. And the same method is probably applicable to all other softwares. And we'll be exporting and uploading the model online through Sketchfab and optimizing the settings for digital display.